Namaste. Hi everyone. My name is Vishnu and I'll be the host for this exciting fireside conversation that we have planned for this evening. A big welcome back to all those who are regular attendees of these Vichar Manthan events. And for all of those new in the audience, Vichar Manthan, or VM for short, is a phrase in Sanskrit which translates to churning of ideas. Here at VM, we delve into the issues and potential futures that we have as a world society and investigate them through the lens of sustainability. By way of brief agenda, today's fireside chat will start with some opening comments from our speaker to set the scene. Leading into our main discussion, this will then be followed by dedicated audience Q&A. Throughout the evening, may I request that the audience continuously post questions via the YouTube chat function, and these will be selected from during the Q&A section of the evening to ensure curiosities are sparked, if not satisfied. So diving right in this evening, we will be exploring one of the potential or emerging futures, the metaverse. The metaverse is a concept which at this point in time has no real concrete definition, as it doesn't point to a specific kind of technology, but a broader shift in how we interact with technology as a whole. Since the definition itself is a hotly debated topic, without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker, Subhash Jogia. He is the co-founder of Ikegia Capital, with a personal mission to champion disruptive technology ventures to impact environment and societies. Subhash serves on the investment committee of Consilience Ventures, a deep tech VC fund, Shake Climate Change Program, and is technology advisor to UCEA Capital Partners. He has over 30 years of experience in investment banking and spent 22 years at Morgan Stanley, which has given him a wealth of experience scaling up deep tech talent, particularly in India. He holds an aeronautical engineering degree from Imperial College London and is a fellow of the Institute of Engineering and Technology. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Subhash. Thank you so much for the invitation. Okay, so, you know, without spending any more time, let's dive right in. So, Subhash, what is the metaverse to you? So if you could spend the next few minutes, set, you know, setting the scene for the audience, that'd be brilliant. Yes, uh, the metaverse concept is uh, certainly a lot of headlines of late um, and particularly with Facebook renaming itself to Meta it's become a, a far more uh, visible in the, uh, in the press and digital press and so in the minds of, of many people but I would say that uh, Meta's label uh, is, is really an amalgamation uh, or convergence of a number of technology trends and developments that have been really emerging over the last few years, I would say the last four years or so. So really the, the way to describe it in, in my view is, uh, is really to appreciate what, what these particular technologies and capabilities uh, are, are about and what it could potentially help us as a society and, and as individuals do, do for us both positive and negative. But if I was to try and describe it in a nutshell, a metaverse is a convergence of, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence and a variety of artificial intelligence uh, capabilities, uh, the ability to immerse into, a, uh, into, into space, into uh, virtual locations, um, to be able to interact uh, with uh, other people, real and unreal, uh, through uh, uh, through uh, uh, augmented reality and mixed reality, um, it's also uh, an, uh, another way of creating a community, an environment that uh, allows uh, uh, individuals, yourself or your digital twin, to be able to interact in a, in a different way. And I, I'm quite conscious that. Um, uh, many of us may be new to some of these terms, but I bet you uh, some of your cousins and younger cousins and nephews and children are probably already quite familiar and and traversing the metaverse uh, through some of the uh, networked games. Uh, you may well have heard of Roblox, a popular uh, online gaming environment that has a uh, has a, a whole scenario, I call it a, a, a universe within that game um, that, uh, that really represents a, almost like a whole 
new life in a way. Uh, but one that's defined, that's defined digitally, one that allows you to trade, to converse, to, to uh, socialize, to uh, really do many of the things that you would do physically, but in a, in a let's call it a new, newly defined world. And um, uh, uh, what I would also say is, is uh, while the gaming world might be the the, the first scenario where uh, a use case that uh, metaverse could converge to, um, enterprises, companies have, have effectively embraced uh, metaverse and what it represents uh, far quicker because there are opportunities uh, that uh, that business allows that. Uh, Businesses are allowed to be able to uh, create a universe that allows them to simulate, to, to recreate uh, situations that allow them to be more productive or to reduce risk. Uh, and well, I'm sure we'll touch on over the next few minutes uh, what those could be. Amazing. Thanks, Subash, for setting the scene. So just, just to kind of further emphasize what this is, would you say it's a platform? So, you know, you mentioned multiple kind of avenues of the metaverse, but is the metaverse kind of the software, you know, is it the code, is it the platform, or is it something else? Is it the extension of existing technologies? If you could just help, you know, narrow down that definition a little bit, that'd be brilliant. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, the, um, uh, the, the, the metaverse is, uh, as you said, uh, an extension of, of our imagination and our re reality uh, in a way, but it's, it's enabled uh, because of the technologies uh, that underpin it. So yes, it is, a, it is a platform, it's a software platform, but it's the application of that software that creates a, uh, an environment which we, which we inter interact. Um, it's also hardware, um, uh, especially if you are um, uh, familiar with uh, augmented reality and virtual reality headsets, um, it requires that. It's also the cloud, because you require that ability to connect and, and interact uh, remotely. Amazing. And um, um, it's also IoT. Yeah, uh, and potentially, you know, maybe the easiest way to understand the metaverse or get to grips with it, kind of almost hands-on, would be to describe some of the tangible things that we could do in this metaverse. So do you see anything that tangibly we can do in the metaverse, either in its current form today or in the next few decades as it evolves and matures? Yes, so let's um, let's see if we can answer that and, um, and maybe take the audience on a little bit of a journey um, because uh, uh, the, the concepts may for some may be a bit uh, ambiguous. But let's let's start with with, with some, something that we we will all know, appreciate, and love. You know, when we were kids, uh, we we had the uh, we, we were bought toys and things that allowed our imagination to run wild and create things in our mind. And I'm sure many of us would have been happy to get a Superman outfit uh, or a Hulk outfit or a, uh, or, or a Snow White dress that allowed us to, uh, to, to pretend to be somebody else and something else in a make-believe world. And, and uh, that was the, you know, a very enriching way and a healthy way to, to develop as individuals. Um, well, if you can fast forward now to uh, to, to many of us will all be uh, familiar with uh, our social media presence on you know, Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or many of the other platforms where we have effectively a virtual community. Some that we, some people that we've met, and many many that we don't meet. But we also have a persona in those uh, in those platforms uh, that we try and portray. Um, some of it may be real. Some of it may be uh, unreal, uh, but uh, essentially we are portraying and projecting ourselves as individuals in the community uh, in a different way, in a way that we want to uh, express ourselves or are actually a, a, a digital extension of ourselves or maybe completely new character, a different avatar uh, that you can project. Well, now if you um, now fast forward to uh, what essentially is described as Web3, uh, it is a decentralized um, uh, environment that allows us to create these universes, uh, to trade, to actually uh, use cryptocurrencies or other digital currencies, or, or to 
create value. Uh, and one of the uh, use cases that is uh, already uh, generating well over a billion dollars worth of investment and, and trade is virtual real estate. So buying a piece of virtual land in a universe that physically doesn't exist, but actually has now a value uh, that you could buy just like you do with a piece of real estate in a, you know, in a, in a world. Um, and uh, you know, that, that allows uh, uh, businesses, for example, to, to advertise, it allows businesses to trade or, or to collect uh, eyeballs and attention uh, that uh, allows another, another dimension to advertise it. But it also, uh, and perhaps uh, 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 an area that many of us will, might become familiar with is uh, from, the, from the realms of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, i.e. Um, uh, treating people uh, with uh, uh, psychological uh, conditions, physiological conditions that can be treated in a, a, in a, in a virtual reality world um, and, uh, and, and other medical conditions that uh, can be treated in this way, which are behavioral based uh, conditions. And uh, that, that's a real world mm -hmm. practical application that uh, businesses are getting absolutely funded for. Um, and this interaction between on that continuum of, uh, of uh, a virtual reality is um, interaction between real world and the virtual world uh, and, uh, and swapping between one and the other. So it allows us, um, potentially allows us to extend ourselves in ways that we want to. Amazing. And, you know, in, in that kind of description of some of the tangible things, I've, you know, you, you described so many industries, you know, we went from finance, trading, to real estate, to all the way to psychological, you know, behavioral therapy. So it almost seems as though, you know, you're of the impression that we can live our entire lives in the metaverse, right? So you've kind of targeted all the major industries and, you know, they've recreated themselves in the metaverse. So is this, am I correct in saying that? Can you see us as human beings living our lives in the metaverse? Um, I can see ourselves, uh, uh, yeah, living our, a, a, a larger portion, a greater portion of our time, of our 24 hours, uh, interacting in this new dimension. Um, whether we call it living us uh, living our lives in there, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, despite the uh, development of uh, and the emergence of these technologies and, and convergence and capability it provides, um, the adoption hasn't taken off yet. And the, 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 the view is, is that uh, you know, widespread public adoption uh, of as we call it, the, the metaverse, metaverses, there isn't one, there's many that you can create um, that, uh, that we'll you know, spend a whole lot of time in there. Uh, certainly, uh, if you're parents, uh, you're worried about the amount of time your kids are spending on, the, on Roblox and, and on the front of the screen and the consequences that you could have uh, on your overall holistic development of the children. But also uh, that, in, in many ways, we're already interacting with elements of the metaverse today. We just don't call it the metaverse. Um, but we are becoming more and more uh, exposed um, in, in a constructive way. Amazing. And, and just to kind of press on the whole adoption piece, can you see the metaverse kind of being in a hype cycle, kind of like the internet in the early 2000s or you know, end of the 90s, where there was loads of money, very high valuations for these tech companies. You know, lots of them were doing nothing and the whole thing popped. Do you think the metaverse right now is in the stage of, oh, there's going to be lots of hype for the next few years and then a period of lull before it actually starts bringing utility? Do you think we're in that kind of cycle when it comes to adoption? We are in the early stages of such a hype cycle. And I could bet the bottom, bottom dollar that uh, it will follow your classic hype cycle uh, and uh, uh, but what I can also say I think the half life of that hype cycle is going to be shorter meaning to say that we'll we'll hit the uh, the peak of that hype much quicker than we were we would have done with uh, with web 2 i.e social media for example uh, and and faster still uh, than it's taking cryptocurrencies to become 
where it is today, which is pretty much mainstream or very close yeah. to mainstream. Definitely. Um, uh, there, I, and I also imagine that uh, the um, as the uh, as the capabilities and the opportunities on how it can be of benefit to society and to individuals become clearer, that that height will really take off. And you can also be assured that it'll crash too in terms of uh, in terms of reality check of what actually it can do uh, for us at this point before it. Uh, because and as we kind of push we're not there we're not there yet yeah we're getting close but we're not quite there um <clears throat> kind of continuing on the lines of you know pushing the boundaries of what we can do in the metaverse so we touched upon earlier you mentioned ai now and then you mentioned metaverse and living our lives there so this is a prime example of heavy data collection but now it's data collection on every aspect of our lives and as we spend more time you know, that's a heck of a lot of data. With the latest advances in AI, it's been shown that we can recreate people who are dead or alive, you know, through Twitter, through Facebook, what they've posted, anything that's ever been posted online or anything that's been said by them can be fed into an algorithm and them as a human being can be recreated. So can you see this happening in the metaverse where one of the use cases could be, it's a place you can go to revisit a loved one because they've you know, enough data on them has been collected, they've been recreated in this virtual environment. Can you see this as a possibility, first of all, and then some of the implications of this? I can see this as a possibility. Um, uh, and I will also hasten to add, not, not any time soon. Um, so, but I can see that as a, as a, as a real probability. Um, and here's why. If you think about today, the technologies that uh, allow us to um, replicate or, or enable certain aspects. So imagine that today you can take a piece of text, turn it into audio. So text to audio, completely normal, kind of established today. Take in, uh, take in a natural pro language programming to be able to speak to your Alexa or to Siri. In, in, in everyday language for it to interpret your question and respond back. Granted, sometimes Alexa and Siri don't quite understand the question and reply back. Um, nevertheless, the ability to be able to take multiple languages, translate to another language, and be able to um, uh, put a semantic around it, contextual and reply back, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a huge leap, which is arguably about two years uh, in the last two years, it's become uh, pretty well established. Well, now, as we add in uh, uh, something quite recent, is the uh, audio to face capability. Um, NVIDIA, for example, has a, a platform called Omniverse. One of its capabilities that they uh, developed recently is the ability to take a video, an audio recording, and overlay it onto your face and have your facial expressions and emotions reflect as as though you are speaking that words. Well, actually you can now therefore take any piece of, piece of text, convert it to audio, have the audio overlaid onto your face as though you spoke words. And the reality and the, the, the convergence and ability to be able to really believe that that is you speak in those words, even though you actually didn't, uh, is, is very impressive. Well, now, if you can then uh, fast forward uh, a little bit further, a uh, few years ago, about three years ago, there was uh, 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 something called GP, GPT-3, a, a platform that essentially allows questions to be asked of the internet in a conversational way and the full knowledge of the internet, uh, all the text and video and audio, uh, all the text actually, uh, it, to be able to interpret that and reply back with a, with a, a reasonably coherent conscious reply. So the entire power of the internet uh, is, is being applied so that you can ask a general question 
and get a reasonably general answer back. Um, and uh, that ability is yet another aspect of why I think the idea of immortalizing yourself or an avatar of yourself could become reality in the not too distant future. So now if you can imagine that, um, uh, how many times uh, do we look at a, at a photo and we cast our minds back to that, in, that impression of that time and in our mind's eye, recreate that feeling, that expression, uh, the sensation, and, uh, and recall the memories of, if you in that photo, recall that, that feeling. Well, you can imagine now if you listen to uh, all of that audio overlaid over the picture of somebody who's no longer around, or maybe never met, uh, and be able to almost bring them to alive, enough to convince yourself that this person uh, is alive. And the, uh, and the ability uh, of your mind to essentially be fooled enough to believe it is it's almost it's crazy. Almost, um, it's creating historical characters. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that all of, you know, a lot of this exists. You know, the metaverse is almost bringing this together, which is fascinating. And just for our audience out there, I know we discussed in that sentence lots of, lots of fancy words. So we said AI, we said GPT-3 algorithms. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to describe everything in detail. And, you know, most of this literature is held in various books. And here at VM, we do have book clubs running across the entirety of the UK. So if you do wish to get involved, please do get in touch via the website, which will be mentioned on the YouTube chat. And also, if you're interested in these kind of detailed topics and you want to engage in a more relaxed way, we do also have a VM podcast. Again, details in the chat, which is kind of an incredibly engaging and dedicated podcast um, with the aim of uncovering ideas and thoughts through the dharmic lens. So please do make sure that, you know, you stay in touch and um, get your knowledge through these various means. So when you come to these firesides, you can really track along with the speaker and myself. So kind of, you know, bringing us back, Subash, we mentioned immortality. So I find that incredibly interesting. Are we all going to become immortal? You know, is the metaverse finally, is this us achieving immortality as a species? Or do you think there's a bit more or a bit less to that? Oh, I think there's a whole lot less to, to that. I mean, I think um, well, immortality uh, is an incredibly emotive, loaded word and, the, um, and all that it represents. Um, I personally think it's rather egotistical for us to even think of immortalizing ourselves. Uh, but others do immortalize us. And, I mean, coming back to the earlier question, uh, I mean, wouldn't it be great to be able to, uh, to ask a question of something that you revere, respect, or a historical figure? For example, having a conversation with Mahatma Gandhi on, on, on topical relevant uh, questions of, of his time in history, or even asking a contemporary question, yeah, how would Mahatma Gandhi deal with a circumstance and situation that we face today. Um, I mean, and there, there is, uh, does, does it sound so far-fetched? Well, it's, it's far-fetched, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility, as we mentioned earlier. Um, you know, do we, uh, can, can we, um, uh, can, can we achieve immortality by uh, by capturing all of our imagery, all of our text messages, all of our writings, all of our thoughts uh, in, in, in some way and digitizing it. Well, the fact is, is if you do enough of it, then yes, uh, there, there's a real possibility that technology will catch up enough to be able to capture aspects of our, of our individuality, of our personality. Um, the important factor is, 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 is there enough data about you to be able to represent you digitally? Uh, and chances are the amount of data that we're capturing from each other, probably. Um, certainly today, you can, uh, like I mentioned, GPT-3, uh, essentially get a, a, a consciousness response back that represents human society. Um, it may be biased, of course, uh, but, but you could. 
it's almost scary when you uh when you think about it in that way you know the fact that we're even bringing up the topic of immortality in some way is is almost worrying when it comes to the metaverse so i think at this point you know for for me and the audience you've painted a nice picture of the metaverse where we have various tangible things where it's going to be in the next few decades but you know the, the key question emerges from existing technologies such as social media is the metaverse just going to become some kind of escape for people who aren't enjoying their real world lives or offline world lives as we can call them or should the metaverse and the life that you have in the metaverse be considered just as valid so what's your take on this well i would say that um the just like social media today uh, and other platforms it's an echo of the physical world in many ways um, which, which is to say that uh, all the challenges we have in the physical world, in a way, do not go away. Uh, the limitations and, and challenges that we face uh, are, in, in some ways, in many ways, expressed you know, within Facebook or in Twitter and so forth, um, and, and, and kind of reflected there. Um, it can be an escapism, a form of escapism, just like most of our immersive games that are our kids are playing today and some of our adults also as well are playing today. Um, it is a form of escapism. Um, going to the cinema is a form of escapism. Diving into the depths of Lord of the Rings is a form of escapism. So per se, escaping into the metaverse isn't, it's not a big deal, why not? Um, the, the, the question often is, is when does something good become a problem? Mm -hmm. And there are there are going to be boundaries on that. So that escapism in itself, um, yeah, along the continuum, become yeah a dangerous thing. And yeah, um, yeah, um, <clears throat> and issues almost... can uh, could could well occur as we're we're worried about. You know, um, yeah. I, and just from a life perspective, just to push you a bit more. So some may say the metaverse is more fair than the offline world, right? So some may say the metaverse wasn't based on which geographical location you were born into, which family you were born into. You just need access to the Internet, which, you know, greatly democratizes how you can start your life in this virtual environment. So would you say it's fair or do you think it should be accepted if someone were to say, hey, me as Vishnu or you as Subhash, life in the metaverse is the one that you associate with, not the life that you have in the real world? Do you think this is something that should be accepted or will become accepted over time? Um, I think the straight answer is I think it will become accepted uh, over time. And here's why. Because the, um, the ability to switch in and out of the uh, virtual, the physical world will become a, a normality. You jump in, I mean, today, your, your kids will, will, will dive into a, an immersive game and be their avatar for a while, then switch out of it. Now. Uh, today, the, the games, such games, allow you to trade and earn some credits. Uh, in the future, they'll, they'll, they'll earn cryptocurrency, so they'll actually have real-world value to it. Um, and uh, and uh, it's going to be very probable to, to buy um, uh, products and goods and services in that virtual world and, and see the benefits or the consequence of, of your behavior in that world. In the physical world, so they, they won't be separate. Uh, they will interact. There'll be over. There'll be bleed and, and overlay between the two. Um, so I, I, I see that uh, certainly certainly happen uh, more and more. So, yeah. Would you say this is kind of akin to the influencers that you see today? So you know they had a social media life, which has made them incredibly wealthy in the real world. Is this the kind of parallel that you're trying to draw between the metaverse and the offline world that you see happening? Is that an accurate parallel? It is, and and, and then some. I think there's there's more to it than than that, and I think there's uh, more. I would say um, real world benefits uh, to be gained um, uh, from uh, from from that sort of influence, but also uh, just recognizing, for example, simply having a Having a Zoom call like this in the future may well be a, a virtualized metaverse equivalent of a Zoom call. 
you know, a two D screen that we that we're all looking at each other on uh, loses a, a, a lot of richness and interaction. Um, the, and the metaverse and the technologies as they mature will allow you to be a lot more uh, humanistic in your in your virtual interaction, which is ironic in many ways. Um, so uh, it, it it will become, I believe, a lot more natural um, in a in a rather weird way. Amazing, and you know, now that we've established, but think about this. Uh, so, in, in addition to that, though, uh, you know, the, the possibilities of uh, of interacting uh, or actually even quote unquote visiting uh, locations and places uh, that you you couldn't or wouldn't otherwise, especially in a world where perhaps travel becomes uh, much more of a luxury than we had taken rather than commodity, um, and, uh, and therefore the ability to be able to um, uh, experience um, situations and things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Um, and add on top of that, um, the, um, uh, the, the ability to, um, uh, to, to train, learn, collaborate uh, much more humanistically uh, is, uh, I would say, a, a real plus. I'm sure many of us are to have Zoom fatigue, so we'll also get uh, fatigued with the metaverse and want to step out and actually you know, feel the breeze on your face. <laughs> definitely, definitely got Zoom fatigue, that's for sure. I think that everyone's experienced that by this point. Um, regarding kind of society flourishing, can you see any real positive impacts to say the family dynamic that can occur from the metaverse. Since we've established that the metaverse is gonna be so interlinked with offline world versus online world, can you see it having a positive impact either on your offline world or just in the life in the online world as a whole? Yeah, I think uh, the, the first uh, sort of knee-jerk reaction uh, and quite rightly um, uh, that I think people have and, uh, and will have is no, not more time on the on your on your screen. Not more time, and I want to be able to physically uh, interact authentically and be in the be in the here and the now. And this is yet another thing that takes away and and create further detachment from you know from your immediate family and friends and so forth. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a uh, that's a very real and, and fair uh, reaction. Especially if you know you're, if some of your family members are not particularly tech savvy, uh, not comfortable with um, interacting on screens and so forth, uh, there's a real danger that uh, they will feel disenfranchised, uh, and quite rightly. Um, and yet, on the other hand, uh, for another subset of your community, um, it may allow you to overcome. Um, uh, some of your uh, psychological um, or, or personality traits that allow you to express yourself in a way that would otherwise be inhibited. Um, and, you know, I, I myself would love to be a musician or not. Um, you know, could I pretend to be Elvis <laughs> in the metaverse, right? And, uh, and, and become a karaoke expert just because I could leave behind uh, some of the, let's call it the physical world, emotional baggage to be able to interact with others uh, and, uh, and therefore uh, actually create a new scenario, a new environment where I can in, uh, interact more freely. Arguably, that's a good thing. And yeah. I say arguably because there's two sides to this coin for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess some of the issues that you mentioned there kind of seem like the issues we face with social media today, right? So many people say it brought them together, but families seem more distant than ever. So are, are we just going to recreate all the problems that we have in the metaverse again? Is that what you see happening? In, in that there's case? a real possibility that could be, yeah. Uh, there's a real possibility that could be the case. I would say, though, that um, because of this ever shortening half life uh, of new technology means that we've got experience. We, you know, we've got experience now of what it feels like to be overwhelmed with Twitter uh, or with podcasts or with Zoom and many others. And we, and we actually learn from wisen up to you know, what, is, uh, what is an overload and overdose, what's, what becomes unhealthy 
Um, and uh, as a consequence of that, I, I think uh, we will be much wiser as to wh when we, it becomes unhealthy for us or what's missing. Um, uh, and there will be many others who will, will be first movers and embrace the new technology, um, learn, make mistakes and, and share with others. Um, certainly, I certainly believe that uh, we're, uh, we're all going to be better and becoming more and more better at, uh, at adopting new technologies, filtering it uh, and deciding how much of, of it that you want. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I think it's a good thing. Sounds, to me, that sounds a lot like you're saying self-governance, right? So it, it, it sounds is. to me like you're saying everyone, it's their responsibility to make sure that they, their offline life is taken care of when they go to the metaverse. Do you think this is a good idea? Or do you think we should have, you know, some government or someone step in and say, no, this is a bad idea, you're not allowed to do it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so governance uh, and, and control, one, one of the uh, uh, ideologies that you that, uh, originated in, in, for example, cryptocurrency to, uh, uh, to Web 2 and to Web 3 and, uh, and also into the metaverse is the idea of trust and control and safety uh, uh, and authenticity, meaning to say that, um, you know, what is considered to be safe? Uh, why should some central body decide for me what I think is safe or what I should or shouldn't be able to do? Now, so one of the tenets of, uh, of, a, of a healthy multiverse is that the members of that community, of that universe, decide the rules for themselves. Uh, they decide the policies, just like you decide set of laws. Um, there is there is no central governing body that will tell you what's right and wrong. Um, but the society, um, uh, uh, the society there will, will decide for themselves what's right and wrong. Um, and of course, if you look at the real world today, uh, and we we know that uh, views and opinions and, and ethics uh, and values. Uh, very far and wide uh, that uh, what is considered to be uh, right or wrong or acceptable or not acceptable. Um, I believe it'll be this same uh, same challenge, but also the same opportunities uh, that, can, uh, that can present itself in, in a newly minted, newly created multiverse. Uh, so we won't get away from those, in, in my opinion, because ultimately it's, it is humans, human interactions that, that are happening. Um, I mean, uh, it's, it's right. having, having said that, having said that, Vishnu, you know, there um, uh, that, that uh, characters, avatars, which are actually digitally created uh, from software, so they're characters that actually do not exist, uh, that can actually become a, a, a member of the community and therefore influence the, uh, the society as a whole, which is actually quite mind-blowing. It is. It, it truly is. And, and, and just, you know, interesting, as we were talking about self-governance, one of the audience members right now, Subash, a person called Mark, is watching this VM through an Oculus Quest 2. So to him, he's already in the metaverse. And also several people have mentioned that they'd love to have another VM on the metaverse. So just to, you know, keep the smiles going, you know, what are the discussions? They've been incredibly impactful to our audience over here. And I guess, I mean, it's a prime example of self-governance, right? So Mark has got his quest to right now watching VM. He is going to decide when he takes that off. There is no governing body. You know, Facebook isn't going to message him and say, hey, Mark, you know, you've had your three hours, now go to bed. So, you know, you can almost see this decentralized governance in action today. And is that what's going to happen, in your opinion? Is this the future? Everyone decides for themselves what's healthy. So, um, you know, you could, you could argue that democracy as a whole is essentially that in practice, um, but age old democracies have their limitations, uh, as you know, um, and, they, and they have a, a historical legacy that we can't get away from. It's an opportunity in a way to, um, to start with a blank sheet of paper on a new metaverse that you decide to create for yourself and decided to implement democracy 
in the way that you want with the benefits of 600 plus years of, uh, of learning in the real world. Uh, could, you, could you fail fast? Could you learn quickly enough and decide and figure out that actually applying this, this form of de democracy uh, will allow us to evolve faster? Quite possibly. Now, here's a, so here's a scenario where uh, we could uh, uh, we could sandbox in in the metaverse, learn how these things develop, how how democracy communities develop in there, and then take that learning back to the real world, and then contact your MP and say we want to change our laws in this particular way. Here's the evidence and proof. Um, those kind of social experiments, uh, in a way, have been happening in Facebook and in other platforms already. Um, and, and not necessarily all with great, great uh, positive outcomes. Definitely. Now, Subash, I just want to let you know the audience is very much engaged, and I'll be getting lots of angry messages if I don't move on to the audience Q and A. So, you know, with time pressing, let, let's get right into it. And, and just before I ask the first question, I do want to give a big thanks to all of our well wishers, who are the reason that these events are even possible. And if you would like to become a well wisher and keep these events going please do visit www.wicharamanthan.org. So the first question, how important do you think it is that different metaverses are interoperable? Can many coexist or do we need to merge these worlds into a single one? And the example that is given is the internet. Um, so my understanding, uh, and, I, and I would caveat it, is my, my view of how things could develop uh, is that uh, there is uh, many metaverses popping up and can pop up. Um, there can be islands of their own uh, with, with minimal interaction with other metaverses. Um, what is common though with all of them is ultimately uh, its connectivity uh, back to the physical world, its connectivity to the to information and internet. Uh, back in the cloud, so there is there, there is a linkage in connectivity. Um, if you uh, if you take some research and experiments uh, that that typically happen with uh, uh, with, with communities and individuals, almost invariably they will develop as a as a cluster, and then uh, they'll get to a level of maturity, and then reach out to another metaverse. It's almost like each village. Uh, forming itself by itself and becoming self-sufficient before it decides to interact with another community, whether it's for trade or for, or for other resources or other information. So why wouldn't uh, the, the metaverse, uh, metaverses uh, continue in that same evolution, only faster? I think it would be a good thing to have multiple metaverses rather than a single one, uh, but there will be a, a sort of common threads uh, tying them together. Okay, and and just something that comes to mind is almost like the app stores. So, can you see consolidation, but not kind of a monopoly, or do you think there should be loads, or is is the app store even a good? Because um, the app stores typically used to describe the metaverse. People say it's going to be one app store with everyone building stuff on top, and I've heard this description many times. Is this something that you agree with? So, kind of following on from the previous question. Um. Yeah, that's an interesting metaphor. Um, I mean, I, I, I would describe it as uh, that there are, rather than App Store, there are multiple layers of infrastructural capabilities, meaning to say um, um, uh, multiple cryptocurrencies and, and digital currencies uh, being developed, um, the ability to interact uh, and, and exchange data between, uh, between metaverses. I can imagine that will be really defined and created by APIs, open source APIs that can uh, allow that sort of development to occur. Um, and, and other services, microservices and others that uh, will enable uh, those, uh, those clusters to, uh, to mature, emerge and, and to scale up. Um, one, of the, um, uh, one of the ideologies again was that there is no uh, central or general government body that's that sits on top of there's no united nations of the meta of the metaverse right that uh, that exists today but there is also a danger that uh many of the 
the, the large technology companies dominate the environment such that they effectively become um, the big brother, if you want to call it that, uh, or an enabler or a controller. Um, uh, and that's something that um, uh, I think will be the choice of the metaverse is to decide for themselves. Um, and, and that's the beauty in itself is because you're aware of that. And if your ideology says, we don't want to be controlled by somebody else. Yeah. We don't want a Vladimir Putin in the metaverse um, uh, in, in invading my metaverse. Um, that's something for, for that community to decide. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's a nice segue into once again, governance, which is our next question. So there's a question on the metaverse will be regulated by the users, but we as individuals um, on the metaverse will need some sort of education to navigate how the metaverse works. And the example given is ECDL, which is European Computer Drivers License Course. Um, can you see this being needed? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, to be honest, do we need an educational course to navigate the metaverse? And so, should someone be in charge of designing this? You know, a rule book that says in the <laughs> yeah. metaverse, make sure you follow these ten rules. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's a. I mean, I, I would liken it to more like um, when you when you pick up a new game. First thing you do is, is open the box up, find the instructions, learn how to use it, uh, and then start playing the game with a with a goal and objective in mind. And then you start to develop strategies uh, for yourself. Um, and, and then become more competent at it. Um, uh, I, I think that, that naturally there will be uh, those pathfinders who are happy to uh, go, go pick up the new game, open it up and, and start playing and go figure out on the way. And in the process, <coughs> and in that process, they themselves will become the teachers of new members uh, joining that metaverse and they themselves will become coaches on, on, hey, this is how the metaverse works. And these are the rules of the road. You know, the kind of things that parents would do for your kids uh, or, or mentors do for, uh, uh, for, your, for your venture in the startup. Uh, your manager might do in, in your workplace um, and they'll find rules of the road. Um, if the question is, is we need a, an, an Uber university that uh, with, 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 uh, with uh, coaches there to teach you how to navigate into this new world? I don't think so. It doesn't personally excite me, but it, the beauty here is that it'll be driven by the needs of the community. Uh, and, and I think if, if the need is there, then somebody will find a way to fill that gap. Um, so yes, I think there, there, will, there will be something that evolves uh, some will be want to just be taught how to uh, to uh, the rules of the road. Others will make discovery for themselves. Yeah. So there's no hard and fast rule, but you can see something developing over time. Um, so just quickly, just so you know, plenty of people can ask their questions. The next question is: Is the digitization of the world into a multiverse a healthy transition for you know the current work situation where everything is increasingly being automated by computers, robots, and AI? You know, is this a healthy transition? If everything is already being taken over by AI, should we now be putting everyone else onto the metaverse? You know, is this a big redundancy scandal in the in the making? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, did the farmer go out of business in the uh, in the um, uh, agricultural revolution? Um, to some, some of them did, but uh, did they transition into a new function and role? They did, um, and through all the um, uh, the other industrial revolutions and the fourth industrial revolution and the future of work clearly indicates that uh, that you know, we are much cleverer and smarter at adapting to the new circumstances that we find ourselves in, um, uh, and that uh, the, the the emerging and convergent technology um, will continue to be tools for you. Uh, they should be, and uh, and there's always a danger that they can be uh, misappropriated like any technologies. Um, do I think it, uh, it's a good thing? Um, I think it's a good thing to the extent that we're able to adapt to those new, new trends. The shock uh, uh, and, the, uh, and the stress and the anxieties occur because of the uncertainty and our, and our in a way, our ability to adapt to those uh, to, to challenges and opportunities. It's the, it's the stress of that 
rather than the technology per se. Mm -hmm. um, and the next question that we have is almost, first of all, they say the game analogy is fine. Okay, so we can keep that aside. Assuming the metaverse is more like the internet, um, and on the internet, you are to some degree accountable for what you say. If you say something on Twitter, say something on Facebook, you know, there's plenty of court cases now for something people said a decade ago. In the metaverse, will it be the same? Is the real me accountable for metaverse's me's actions? Is the question. I believe there will be. And I think uh, th this example uh, uh, is, a, is, a, is a great question, actually, in that hey, we've, we just, we're learning and we just learned the consequences after 10 years or so of Facebook and, and other social media platforms um, and the, the challenges and consequences that it, it has thrown up. And I think we will apply that learning to the metaverse um, or metaverses and, and, and ensure that the behavioral implications uh, are, are, uh, and the consequences are, are clearly moderated in a way that that virtual society would like it to be. Mm -hmm. So you would say, would you say it's a direct parallel? So whatever we experience today in terms of governance with Twitter, Facebook, is going to be very similar to Metaverse, its consequences. Or do you think that this is going to evolve as we move into the Metaverse? I think it's going to evolve. I think the, the, the risk and challenge is actually much greater, mm -hmm. largely because of our, our a, a much greater immersion into that environment. Therefore, the influences and the consequences uh, are, are going to be much more impactful and effective. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so I, I think the, the risks in a way are higher simply because of its ability to influence and, and, and uh, drive our behaviors much more effectively. Um, so uh, I think that's going to require um, a, a, a more effective set of governance around it. Um, but the governance is not going to be done by somebody else. It'll be done, it, and it can, it should be done by those members, right, to, to, to create that uh, safe environment. And, and Sooner the better, actually. And, and this is where I think, in, in a way, like most, most uh, policies and, and, and regulations, they, they come much after the, uh, uh, the, the consequences have been become apparent. Um, uh, and because of the ever shortening half-life, it becomes even more important to be thinking ahead of precisely these challenges that, 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 the, that this question is implying. Definitely. And, and now the next question, almost on a, on a slightly funnier note, someone has asked, can we truly be confident that we're not already in a metaverse? So I'm sure you've heard the debate, <laughs> of, are we in a simulation? Um, you know, just, yeah. it, it, it's quite a funny question. What, what, what do you think? Do you think we're already there? Are we, are we just talking about the metaverse in a metaverse? Well, this morning I took the red pill. Ah, you took the red pill. <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> and I turned left uh, as I got out of the street, and who knows? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, joking aside, I actually do think that we're, we are, in a way, uh, already living in aspects or, or the periphery of metaverses. We have been doing in 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 many ways because we've been virtualizing ourselves for a very long time through, in fact, Innocuously through our uh, presentation of our CV to our to uh, uh, to our social media presence to our photos, which we might Photoshop a little bit to make it look a little bit better, um, uh, and, and in many ways we, we have been doing that already, and, and now uh, it, it's it's becoming a lot more immersive and impactful thanks to thanks to the emerging technology. Amazing, and now and now I'm going to bring it back to a, a slightly more serious note. Hey. We might be the ones that people are laughing at if we find out that, hey, we were always in a metaverse, but who knows, we can leave that for the next few decades. Um, what impact does the digital extension of ourselves have on our real self? So it's more, if we do something in the metaverse, it's not the consequence, it's more the effect that it will have on our real world offline body. Can you see a direct connection between the two? And what do you think? I do, I do, yeah. I absolutely do, and, um, and I'll give you two examples. One of them is, is that um, if you're in a, in a, in a it, uh, behavioral impact of being in a metaverse, let's say uh, you know, you're, you're in your own community, you're trading um, with, with your cryptocurrencies, you're buying some product, um, and you fail to 
um, you fail to pay. So now your credit rating in the virtual me metaverse uh, has uh, has some substance. And if that uh, if that happened to be a lender, and I'll tell you about HSBC, who have uh, are now very actively involved in partnering with uh, with, uh, uh, with with a metaverse organization. Um, if you don't pay your dues to HSBC in the metaverse, um, will they uh, will they charge you as a lender in the real world against your mortgage? Um, it could happen. Uh, they, there could be consequences, and, and perhaps there ought to be. Uh, but I don't think that there'll be a complete separation between the two, unless you design your design your metaverse and your avatar, your digital twin, to be completely separated from your physical identity, which is which could be possible. Um, but also behavior. I mean, uh, if you if you conduct criminal activity, criminal activity as we would define in the physical world, in the uh, in the in the metaverse, um, to the extent that uh, it it changes your behavior in the physical world, there is a there's a real issue. If you're if you turn out to be a, a virtual murderer in 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 the in the metaverse, uh, should you have consequences in the real world? Yeah, I, I think that I think the behavior will, and you can't separate the two uh, so readily. And I think I think we have just a minute remaining, but I think we can get this question in. So there's a quick question on Elon Musk said nobody wants to strap a phone to their face for eight hours, whereas Bill Gates said within three years, all work meetings will take place in the metaverse. So is there a balance here? You know, is, is there some middle ground that we're going to end up hitting? There is a continuum. There is, yes. Uh, I don't think we'll be at, at each, either of those spectrums, uh, ends of the spectrum. Um, and people will find their uh, uh, their um, medium, uh, wherever that happens to be. Uh, some will adopt fast, and others will be uh, uh, be following uh, the crowd. Completely fine. The the trick in in my view is is uh, is that you can't ignore it. Uh, you shouldn't ignore it. And actually, the less you ignore it, the less likely you're going to be stressed and shocked by it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we've just about run out of time in terms of Q&A, uh, and I know there's lots more questions, but I'm sure we'll probably have to do another event to get through the rest of them. Um, but now, Subash, if I can request you just give your closing remarks, um, and specifically if you could touch upon where you see the metaverse in the next few decades, so at least we as a VM audience are not too shocked when it happens, that'd be great. Um, I can't think that uh, imagine that far ahead in the next few decades, but I would certainly say within the next five to ten years uh, that, uh, well, in fact, five years, I would I will bet that the metaverse will become as as normal and accepted as social media platforms are today. Um, uh, it's uh, it has a great opportunity to, in a way, accelerate our own societal evolution. Um, the direction in which that evolution goes. Uh, is very much in, in our hands. Um, and in order to influence the way that evolution goes, both of metaverse, but also of us as individuals in society, um, it is to make sure that we're, we, we read up and, and, and embrace the, the ever-changing technology um, so that we can be um, better ready to, to embrace it and use it um, and to avoid the dangers of the previous generations of technologies. Amazing. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today, Subash, and thank you for taking the time out to come and discuss this topic with me and the entire audience that's tuned in today. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And also a big thanks to the audience for being so engaged for the entire discussion. I think Subash and myself, I definitely enjoyed all the questions that were coming through. Perfect. Thank you. And before you all leave, please do stay up to date with all of our VM events by joining our mailing lists and following our social media. Hope you all have a lovely evening. Take care and I'll see you at the next one.